So in the part two here, we're going to just kind of look at a couple of other uh, examples, nothing, nothing too very uh, varying from what we just looked at in the first part. Uh, but it's always helpful to to kind of look at something more than one way. Uh, and then the majority of it actually is not going to be that. It's going to be that we're going to then take what we've seen here and what we've learned, and then we're going to take one more pass through uh, the 40f lib code, uh, specifically where it's working with uh, creating the the database. Um, uh, statements and see how your code is actually disseminated, how it looks at your classes, how it uses reflection uh, to interact with the database specifically. So I'm on um, version 2 here. I've just issued a git checkout uh, version 2. So now my branch is on version 2. Uh, this one I don't think I'm going to change much, maybe a little, but I uh, will figure that as we go through. Most of this is the same. I have the same setup initialization. I have uh, the same two things here. Um, I think I changed, let me see, I don't think car has the method anymore because I'm not going to use that. So the beep method went away. Uh, but other than that, this is largely the same. So we're going to now, first I'm just going to define uh, a field. Now remember this is a reflection. So if we go up here, we have Java LangReflect field, again, is where the library is in the Java runtime. Um, and I'm going to have these two first name field and year field uh, so I can access them in other places. So that's why I put them outside of the block. Um, the first thing I do now is a slightly different variation on getting a field. Before I got a class and I iterated through it, this time I'm, I'm going the opposite way. I'm taking an instance. So I'm taking uh, the Boxster here that I created an instance of a car. I'm getting its class to go back to class. And then I'm getting a field uh, by its name. So just a little bit of a tweak on, on kind of what we've already seen, right? And that actually gets a field. So remember this is a reference to the actual definition of the field. Uh, we've seen most of this before, right? Uh, where you can get the name, uh, the type, and then the value. And again, this is good to repeat this stuff. Um, what I'm doing here is passing in the instance I want the value for, right? So when we run this, we should see that the instance we get back is in fact uh, the Boxster's version of that field, which is, uh, I don't know why I called it first name. Uh, it probably just should have been name, but uh, either way, it should be the name of that car, which if I scroll up here, uh, is lonely in the winter, apparently. Uh, anyway, so then I also have the year field, uh, same idea. So it's going to get the, the year of that particular car. And if I had changed it, if I had another car up here, which I don't yet, I only have the one car, I have a driver, um, then I would get uh, something else there. Um, the next thing here is that we do, in fact, create another car. So just to have more than one, we create a pilot here. Um, same idea as before. I check to see that it doesn't exist already. Uh, if it doesn't, I create it. Um, and then we're going to use both of these things uh, to kind of do a little bit more. Um, now, uh, what I can do actually is I can take both of these things and iterate through them. I think I do that in the third one though, so I'll leave that out. Um, but now that I have this new car, um, let's do the same thing that we did up here, the year field dot get. Um, and in this case, I'm going to get um, the pilot instead of the Boxster. So you should see a year for both the Boxster and you should see a year for the pilot. Uh, let's go ahead and see if this does in fact work. Let's see what happens. Uh, so there we are. So we have uh, the reflection name, uh, the model, awesome. And the type is a string. And the value for that first one was Boxster S, so that works. Um, I think I, I referenced the wrong thing before. Let's just go back and, and look at this really quick. Uh, I said this and uh, get class, get field model, sorry. So I don't know why I thought it was name. I think I just threw myself off because this is called first name field. Uh, it really should have been called model field, so that would have made more sense. Uh, so that worked. And then the next thing it did uh, was do the 
year, which is an integer and it's 2001. And then we created the pilot and we only asked for the value, right? The difference here was to illustrate again that we're passing in to the same field. This year field dot get is the same here as it is here, but I'm passing in the two different instances and I'm getting the value of that field for the Boxster and the value of that field for the pilot. This was a 2001, this was a 2019, right? And that in fact does work here. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is we're actually going to check out uh, version two. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so git check out version three. And now if I click in here, updated, cool. All right, so let's see what's different. Uh, basically here, we just put the pilot up top because we created the all three now. So we have one driver, two cars, and now we're gonna create a list. So we're going to um, get both of them. This is also another opportunity to show the, uh, the, the services that are available straight from 40F Lib because again, None of these service calls are handwritten. They're all just using the library's service calls. There's no, you know, car service or driver service in this example. So FDF common services dot get all current, and then I pass in a car class means that all of the car instances that are available are going to come back as a list, and that's exactly what happens here. So because I've saved the Boxster and the Pilot, I should get back those two in this list. Uh, here I'm just making sure that I got back something, right, that all cars isn't null and that the size is greater than zero. And then I'm going to get this class. Now, let's let's actually see what happens here. So I don't know uh, if you have an assumption about what you're going to see at this point, um, but we're going to take this a step at a time. So let's let's talk through it. So I have this working class one, and it's all cars dot get class. Now, you might think, this will return a car class. I don't know. Maybe you're thinking that. Maybe you're not. Um, we'll find out. And then I'm going to print it out, right? This is going to take that thing that it was returned, and it's going to print out its name. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So Gradle run. And what it printed out here, if you notice, is an array list, which actually makes sense because if we go back here, you can see that the thing I'm asking for is all cars, which is in fact an array list, right? So remember this returns an array list, um, which we're you know putting into its super as a list, uh, but that's what it is, it's an array list. If we want to see what the actual thing inside the array list is, we have to get one of its members, right? So here we're saying working class two is that array dot get element zero, and that's okay because we know that we have you know at least one element, and we're going to get the class of that. So let's see what that does. And now we can see that yes, in fact, the first one is still an array list, and the second one, the things that are inside are cars, right? So this is actually pretty analogous to uh, that array list that we're passing in that has all of our classes when we initialize uh, 40th lib, right? You could kind of use that example here. Uh, and then once we have that, uh, this is similar to what we were doing in the original one, we could do something like uh, get all the fields of that thing. So let's just go ahead and see how that looks. Save this, run it. And now we should see everything to do with a car, right? And we do. Uh, we can see that we have the make. Um, I also added the annotations here. So we didn't do that before. Uh, let me just make sure that I added the annotation here. I believe I did. So I added back in car. Remember current driver here? I mentioned that this one might return, and it has. This was the one that we would use this ID to get the driver and then populate the driver object here. But... I don't want to save that, right? I only want to save this. So we said using this FDF ignore meant that this member would not be persisted to the database, right? This one would, uh, but this one wouldn't because it has this FDF ignore. So uh, 40th lib has to be able to look for this annotation when it's looking at your classes that want to utilize 40th lib and decide, you know, if it has this annotation, I don't want to save this thing, right? It also paves the way that we could do cooler things with annotations in the future, like maybe you want to use them to uh, denote a certain type of relationship or something like that. 
Oh, but let's look here. So zero, 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 zero. Oh, look at that, one. So when it got down to current driver, there it is, of the type uh, model driver, uh, it denotes there that in fact it does have an annotation. So uh, that is reflected here. If we look here, you can use this field dot get annotations. Um, and I'm using the length because it's going to return um, all the annotations. So if we want to see that, we could remove this length here. Uh, and I believe it's an array. So I'm going to get the zero element. And then we could say, you know, maybe get uh, the class of that or the annotation type, right? Let's say, let's see what that does. I'm actually curious. I might be breaking stuff. Let's see what happens here. Uh, so let's do annotation type. And yep, I broke stuff. Sweet. So without diving too much into this, because I don't want to uh, break stuff on the fly, I know I actually have uh, lines that relate to the annotations in the library itself uh, when we get there. So I'm not going to, to go into the debugging mode right now while we're uh, you know sitting here uh, trying to progress. Um, but I can show you that actually when we explore uh, the 40f lib code. So let's let's go ahead and do that because it's as good a time as any to, to kind of take this knowledge now and see how we use it. So here I am in uh, 40f lib. I'm specifically in the persistence queries core MySQL queries. Now you could look at the Postgres ones or um, the H uh, the hypersonic SQL or hypersql ones. Uh, it's all the same. Uh, so it doesn't matter which one you choose to look at. Um, but if you if you dig in here, this is we talked about this a little bit in the past, uh, and especially if you're doing option two, this is really important. Um, there's all these methods in here, like check database. Um, these a lot of what happens in here would be repeated for database to database. But what's important is when you create these statements that the syntax of the statements fits that particular database, right? So for MySQL, Postgres, etc., they are going to be different. Uh, you can see here where it actually uh, does that logging that you see every time it starts up. Well, not this. This is actually only when it creates the database. Um, but you get the idea, right? So what we want to look at here, though, is more of what we're doing with um, the reflection now. So let's focus in there. So this one is now, once you've created it and you know that your database exists, the next thing it does is check to see if the tables exist. And this isn't a one-shot deal, by the way. I just want to show this really quick. Um, if we go back to MySQL here and we look at the tables, there's still only car and driver, right? Uh, because we haven't added anything. But notice that right now this is created. It's it's you know it's not going to create a new uh, database because I already have one. Let let's create a new class here. Um, and let's call it I don't know uh, garage. No idea. Just kind of making something up here. And uh, garage needs to extend uh, common services, right? Uh, common state, excuse me. And let's make this bigger so you can actually see it. And we're going to keep this pretty simple. I'm just going to give it one member um, public class uh, name or class. Where am I? I'm like, sorry, just having one of those days. Uh, public name and it needs a type, so we're going to make it a string. And we'll just make it null for now, um, or we'll make it an empty string. That's even better. Um, and we're just going to create this thing because I want to add it. I want to show you what happens. So if I go to reflection demo here, and I then go to where we initialize 40th lib, and I add here uh, my model dot add and garage dot class. Um, it's now actually going to add a new thing in here when we start it back up. So let's let's do that. Let's just go here, uh, start this back up. And when it runs, if we go up to the top here, we should see, there it is, creating table garage. So when it does this stuff, it doesn't just do it the first time when it's like, oh, okay, you know, like you're creating a database for the first time. I'm going to create everything. If that was the case, garage would have never been added, right? Because... I'm not creating the database this time. It already existed. So now if I go into the database and I look in there, I should see if I do uh, show tables, uh, garage. And if I do select star from garage, there won't be anything in there because I haven't actually saved anything there yet. Um, but you get the idea. I can do a describe on garage. And you can see that it does, in fact, have my name field. And then, of course, it has the common state fields. 
So that's uh, just important to note that like it does this stuff every single time, not just when it starts up. Um, it looks first to see if these things exist, and if they exist, great, it doesn't recreate them, but if they don't exist, then it does create them. And that goes for fields and everything else too. Now, the first thing it does here is this. Now, let's talk about this because this is actually um, a good example of it using reflection. This is the model classes. I'm glad we did that example because it, it kind of puts our brain in the right spot that we were just using right here, right? So see this here, initialized data model, this my model. This is the model classes. This is where that comes from, right? So whatever I passed in here goes into this for loop. And notice here that for each one, it's getting the instance, um, the class of that thing, right? And then it's saying, if there's not an annotation present, so this is one of the examples I was just mentioning. They said, like, when we get into this, I'll have examples of how you can uh, work with annotations. So for the class, class, uh, there is a method, is annotation present? And then you can search for this annotation, which notice that the annotation itself is a Java class, so I'm referencing it as a class. Um, and so if it is present, I'm not going to do this, right? I can skip it. This is all database connection stuff. Um, and then I'm going to create this thing. Now notice here that I have the class and I'm using get simple name, which is a little bit different uh, from just get name. It's just getting a, a specific version of the name that maybe doesn't have, I think it was that it didn't have the entire package piece. I can't remember. Um, and then it's also making it to lowercase uh, to not be um, case specific, to, to force everything lowercase. So there's no issues with um, case uh, later. In fact, some databases are very finicky about this. So this is an important point. And uh, then I'm also here getting uh, the name to use it to create the table. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing things like that. Here's all the fields. This is an interesting one. So when you create the table, right, you need to tell it about the fields. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually uh, getting the field length and then I'm streaming out. I'm using a stream here um, and a filter to get all of the fields from the class and append them to the SQL statement as it iterates through. Right, so that's uh, a cool piece of functional programming there um, that basically does what would have taken a few loops and a whole bunch more lines uh, to kind of condense it into one piece. Um, but what we're streaming on is all the fields, right? So that's going to get all the fields from the class and stream on it. And then we're saying we're gonna apply a filter here that that field doesn't have an annotation present of the FDF ignore. Right, because remember any fields like our uh, current driver uh, one, we don't want to include. And then for the ones that don't, we're going to append the following. Right, we're going to append just either a blank space if they if they didn't, or um, with the comma. Right, and then that's pretty much that. We don't have to go through all those little details. Um, check fields is now if the table existed, but you add a new field. So for example, if I come back in here and we go to garage and we say um, name and let's say public uh, integer size um, equals zero, right? Or maybe we'll say door, let's call it door size. That makes more specific for uh, thing, I mean, number of doors, whatever. And we'll say it's a seven foot door, right? Um, so now, if I restart this thing, you should see that it won't recreate the garage table, but it creates the field, right? So that was actually done here in this check fields, right? So same idea. It does a very similar thing where it looks through the fields to see, um, is this field actually present in, in the class? And does it have the annotation we care about? And if so, it adds it. Um, let's go down a little bit further now. Um, you're going to see all of this, like so for update, for example. Um, notice here that we have all kinds of checks to see the type of the fields. So we first go into the class and then we get all of its fields. And once we have the fields, we start building uh, the actual update statement. So here's the string builder update. 
and once we get to where we have to add the actual update for each field, you need to be specific about what type the field's going to have, right? If it's a string, it needs to have single quotes or whatnot, and if it's an integer, it doesn't. Like, there's, there's very specific syntactual nuances when you create the SQL statement based upon the data type. So if it's a string, we're going to do it this way. Notice here that everything is a prepared statement, right? So uh, 40flib is taking care of your uh, SQL injection worries for you. Um, and notice that we are, um, you know, setting types and things like that in here as well based upon your uh, field type. If it's a long, it's using a big int, right? If it's um, an int, it's using an integer. If it's a uh, string, it's using a var car. Um, based on the size, I think I think that actually changes, um, and I think you get the idea here. If it's a boolean, it's using a boolean, right? If it's a um, a car, it's using a car. If it's a character, um, right? And different database softwares will actually map differently here. They're, the types aren't all the same. It would be ideal if they were, but they're not. Um, it even deals with objects and other things too. But I'm not going to go too deeply into that. Uh, insert is very similar. Uh, again, building the SQL string based on how it breaks down the reflection. Um, and the select, again, also very similar. So in this case, let's look at what happens once we get a row back. So here we do the prepared statement. Um, we, we get everything we need. We create the SQL. Uh, it's kind of the opposite here. We got to wait for it to come back before we start working with it. So here we do the actual call and here we get back the query. And now we're going to iterate through the results. So what we're going to do here is basically say, okay, well, for every result, row we got back, um, we're going to create an object. Now notice we're going super generic, right? This is just an object here at this point. Um, and then we're going to say, all right, so for every uh, fields in C, uh, we're going to iterate through it, right? Now what is C? So C is the class that we passed in here, right? So if you remember when you're, you're calling these generic, so to speak, the 40F lib services directly, you have to tell it what class you're working with, right? That's how it knows. So if I passed a car, it's going to iterate through all the fields in a car, right? So here you can see how we're combining uh, the generics here that we say, okay, this is going to be a car. Um, you, cause I know that because you're going to tell me it's a car, but one day if you're using it and it's a garage, cool, it's a garage, doesn't matter. Whatever you pass me here, those, that's how I'm going to know what's going to get iterated through here. That's the beauty of reflection. So for each field, we're going to check for that FDF ignore. Um, assuming it's not there, we can move on. Um, we're going to get the type and we're going to see if it's a string and if it's a string, uh, then we're going to do some very specific things that we care about for a string, right? Um, if something fails, we can be very specific about that too. We can look at the exact uh, SQL state errors that come back. Now again, sometimes these are specific to the database like MySQL or Postgres or whatever, so these might need to change a little bit based upon which database you're working with. Um, but you can see here how we're using reflection based upon uh, the field, the class, all of these pieces, and essentially all the output of this is just to build, in this case actually to build the object that came back from the SQL, um, but in the insert and update in those other cases, it's to actually create the statement, right, based upon uh, what you have. So this is uh, pretty in-depth and it just kind of scrolls down from here and, and gets a little bit more convoluted, um, but the basic idea is has been expressed, right, and that's you know, these generics here combined with this, right? So remember when, when I do anything here, I pass the class and, and I pass the object and that's what these two things are, right? And in passing the class, then I can dynamically iterate through its fields and do all that because you gave me the class that you want to work with. And that's how we get to this being able to manipulate and understand and introspect on our code at runtime, even though we're in a statically typed language, right? We just have to lay down some rules of the road uh, that we can apply and then it all works together.